is a country on the east coast of Africa that sits astride the equator. Its strategic location bordering the Indian Ocean makes it a gateway to its landlocked neighbours and the region's commercial hub. It is these favourable conditions for economic stability that draw the rural population into the cities searching for opportunity and a better life for their families. But the cruel irony is that right in the heart of Kenya's cities, such as the capital Nairobi, lie some of the largest slums in sub-Saharan Africa. Here, economic migrants watch their dreams of employment and prosperity fade as they end up living in deplorable conditions with only the barest of amenities. The Millennium Development Goals for Water and Sanitation serve as an entry point to countering these social problems and spurring economic growth. UN Habitat's Water for African Cities program is working with governments, non-governmental organizations and communities to attain the MDGs concerning access to clean water and basic sanitation for Africa's urban poor. The main strategic uh, implementation focus is on demonstrating uh, uh, pilot uh, activities in the country and using that as a learning uh, tool where we feed into bigger scale projects. And that uh, we do with the African Development Bank. Kibera is a densely populated informal settlement in Kenya's capital, Nairobi. It comprises 13 villages and is the second largest slum in Africa. The sanitation situation in Kibera is far from adequate. Basic amenities like clean water supply and sanitation facilities are extremely few and far between. Many slum dwellers depend on vendors for their water needs and this supply usually comes from illegal connections or punctured mains water pipes. In the absence of proper sanitation, many residents use the ditches that run between their structures as open-air toilets. UN Habitat, in conjunction with the government of Kenya, has intervened to improve the water and sanitation conditions in one of the villages, Soweto East. A local NGO called Maji Naufanisi is the implementing partner. UN Habitat helped organize the election of a settlement's executive committee that includes all relevant stakeholders in the village. This focus on pro-poor governance structures has enabled people with low incomes to have a voice in collective decision-making. The Settlement Executive Committee played an important role in mobilizing the community to provide for relocation of families and the construction of an access road by UN Habitat. The road has helped open up the settlement to this project. The people in the slum they were never, uh, you know, uh, positive to any attempt to come and, you know, improve the slum because of the past interventions which were never, you know, they were never involved. The involvement of UN Habitat, you know, contributed a lot in instilling that faith in the people to accept this particular program. In Kibera, UN Habitat, in conjunction with Maji Naufanisi, has facilitated the construction of seven toilet blocks strategically placed in the four zones of Soweto East Village. We had a very small pit latrine here before. It often got full, so no one wanted to use it even during the day. At night, people would relieve themselves in plastic bags and throw them outside. Since this toilet block was built, life has changed. Water for African Cities has recognized the role of young people in the alleviation of poverty and inequality. To this end, a special resource center has been constructed to cater for the needs of young people in Kibera's Soweto East village. The center will house a library and IT facilities. 
people here are living in terms of they are looking for work. Most of them are unemployed and the youth are looking for something that they can earn something for a living, maybe very quickly. So we had that task to mobilize them and make them start thinking positively. Korogosho is another informal settlement in the northeastern part of Nairobi. Korogosho has no central sewer system and piped fresh water is a luxury only a few of the residents enjoy. UN Habitat's Water for African Cities program is working through an international NGO called the African Population and Health Research Center to improve the water and sanitation situation in the settlement. This sanitation facility managed by the Korogosho Express Women's Group was built through the program. Most of the houses don't have any toilet at all. Most of them use the paper bags and then they put in their feces, they do what they do and then they throw it, that's the flying toilets. So almost all the drainages, they are just full of feces. Super Action GA Rehabilitation Center is situated in the heart of Korogosho. The school has benefited from the program with a new toilet facility. After securing the scarce water supply, one of the biggest problems in low-income areas is the ability to establish its quality. Scientists have created low-cost portable test kits that can be used anywhere and require minimal training. Teachers in this settlement have been trained on these methods and are now passing the knowledge on to their pupils. We fix it in our test tube that way. In addition to the promotion of water education in schools, Water for African Cities has also implemented a well-crafted strategy to spread the word on better water use and hygiene practices within communities. There is a very big change in, in the community because there are some mamas who didn't know how to wash their hands. What I did before, I was just dumping my hands and wiping on my dress. That was one way which made us that we didn't know how to wash our hands. But now we were taught. Eleven primary schools in this area have benefited from the promotion of school-based hygiene and sanitation. These include Ngunyumu Primary, which is a city council of Nairobi school, and Korogosho Glory Primary School, which now boasts a new eight-seater toilet block and water tank. Naivasha is a town in the Rift Valley province of Kenya. It is named after Lake Naivasha, on whose shores it stands. The lake is struggling to sustain the water demands of an ever-growing catchment population and the increased floricultural activities on its shores. 2006, a feasibility study was commissioned to really see is it viable to go into water and sanitation implementation. And out of the feasibility study, it was inevitable that really the water and sanitation issues for the urban poor in Naivasha have to be addressed if the lake has to be conserved. Solid waste management is an integral part of environmental sanitation. There is an interdependency between the provision of clean water, sanitation and solid waste management. In Mirera Karagita, a low-income peri-urban neighborhood just outside Naivasha town, there was need for a sustainable local solution to solid waste management. One micro-enterprise that is making a difference in this area is the Lake Naivasha Disabled Environmental Group. Water for African Cities has enabled the group to establish non-motorized transport as an efficient tool for solid waste management. We manage the solid waste by sorting the items that can be recycled and those that can be sold, like bottles and metal. We can also make fertilizer because some waste from the kitchens can make organic fertilizer. Initially, water in the Karagita area was supplied by vendors. It was expensive and of poor quality. 
UN Habitat partnered with a non-governmental organization called Water and Sanitation for the Urban Poor, or WASAP, and provided the infrastructure to provide accessible, affordable, and better quality water. It is because of UN Habitat that we can boast we have a water and sanitation infrastructure, the tanks, the pipeline, the water kiosks, and the treatment units. On behalf of the people of Karagita and Kamere, we say thank you because the fruits have been seen immediately. As African cities increasingly serve as engines of growth, the continent's population will continue to migrate to urban centers. The demands on governments to provide adequate sanitation and water supply will keep rising. Initiatives like the Water for African Cities program play a vital role in bridging the demand gap. But the real value of demonstration projects such as this lies in the capacity of governments and local authorities to upscale and replicate them. This will ensure sustainable access to proper sanitation and safe drinking water for Africa's urban poor, making a tangible impact on their lives and serving as a stepping stone to a brighter future.